God one more time. Amen. Amen. I thank God that he woke us up this morning. I thank God that he allowed us to, to feel the cool air, to see the snow. I'm grateful to God that he allowed us to come into his house of worship one more time. Oh, what a mighty good God we serve. Brothers and sisters, you know, you can hardly believe it. You know, through all that we've been through, not just 2020, but all that we've been through down through the years, I could have never imagined that one day we'd be standing in 2021. Next week, I celebrate a birthday. I'll be 60 years old, and that's not old. But I remember as a young man, as a teenager, thinking that never imagining 2021. Uh, to me, back then, 1999 was a long way off. Back then, we talked about Y2K turning into 2000. But here we are, through all the valleys, through all the mountains, through all the agony, all the, all the turmoil of life, here we are standing in 2021. Oh, what a mighty good God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You ought to give God a hand praise just for being alive today. It's a little echo that's coming back right in here, so you may want to just take it down just a little bit. It's just a little feedback. Thank God for our sound technician uh, in the sound booth, Matthew Glass. I'm grateful to God for Paul Kaiser, Brother Paul, and his wife, Keisha, making this broadcast available to you on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page. I thank God for Brother Chris Sims, our music director, who's here today playing music for us, and our percussionist, Marcus Carter, who are preparing to play music of inspiration. We thank God that we can come into his house and worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we start every Sunday, we always start with the word of prayer. Won't you bow with me in a moment of prayer? Oh, gracious God in heaven, eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, now for another day's journey. We thank you, God, for watching over us last night. We thank you, Father, for keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger this past week. Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank you enough. You've been mighty good to us. You do such wonderful things for us. And we're thankful and grateful for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Father, help us. Help us today. We need you today. We live in a time of turmoil and upheaval. We need you today, Lord. We need you to fall fresh on us today. Let your Holy Spirit move on us, Lord, and have your way, God. Have your way. Touch everyone in this place. Touch everyone under the sound of this place. On the social media platforms at home, God, touch and open hearts and prepare minds to receive your word. And touch me, Lord. Use me as you will. Let your word go forth with understanding and boldness, where your name is magnified, glorified, and your people are edified. Father, touch this service and let it be pleasing in your sight and this service rendered to your glory. This is our prayer. We're your children. We're your servants. You're our Father and our God. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us now prepare to go into the worship as our music director, Chris Sims, plays for us music of inspiration as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.
it's time for the welcome. And our trustee, one of our trustees, Thomas Shumpert, is here now to render the welcome, to welcome those who may be visiting this morning and welcome those who are watching by way of social media. Brother Shumpert, amen. 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 Good morning, Christ Baptist Church. Good morning. Members and friends. It is my responsibility here today is to render the welcome. Do we have any visitors? If we have any visitors, please stand at this time. Please stand. Seeing that we don't have any, I would just like to thank each and every one of you all who came out today. We uh, enjoy having you here. And, uh, you know, I want to say that uh, contrary to what it may seem sometimes, uh, the way things are looking at some time, God is still in the blessing business. And I believe he's going to continue to take care of us. Thank you very much. Bye. Amen. Amen. That's right. God is still in the blessing business. Amen. We still, we still serve a mighty good God. A mighty, mighty good God. You know, this past week, given the events that we've all witnessed, really over the past several weeks, you know, we need, we need God now. We need leadership, but we need to make sure that God is with us. We need to make sure that we increase our prayer life. We need to make sure that, that we talk to God. We talk to Jesus every day. We talk to God in the name of Jesus every day. And this past week, given all that's been going on, and when I noticed that there are more soldiers stationed at the nation's capital, more soldiers and airmen stationed at the Capitol building in Washington than there are soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. Here, here we are protecting our democracy from ourselves. We're protecting our democracy from an enemy that is within. Now I know that several members here at Christ Baptist Church, Deacon George Hollingsworth served as an officer in the United States Army. I served in the military. And I was deployed several times. Two of those tours were, were to countries to make sure they don't come across the border and invade someone else's independence. We were stationed overseas to protect other nations' democracies. And now we have to protect our own democracy. Oh, we're living in tumultuous times tumultuous times and after much prayer and reflection I asked the Lord to give me a word to give me a word to take me to his holy word and give me a word that's relevant for today and almighty God led me to the book of Joshua the book of Joshua Joshua chapter 1 and Joshua chapter 6 in Joshua chapter 1, we will be reading verses 1 through 6. And in Joshua chapter 6, we'll be reading verses 1 through 5. In the gospel book of John, the book of Joshua, the Old Testament book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, and if you're able to stand, let us rest to our feet for the reading of God's word. And I'm reading the New International Version this morning. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 6, the Bible reads, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, 
so will I be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6 reads, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the, them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. This month we are celebrating the life and holiday birthday of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King, he led many boycotts, he led peaceful protests, he led many marches to set free those who were oppressed. Dr. King led boycotts against buses and against department stores and lunch counters who were treating people unfairly. He led peaceful protests to amplify, to magnify the injustices in this nation. He led many marches. He was the drum major, the drum major. He was the leader of many marches. He marched on Washington for jobs and equality. He led the march from Selma to Montgomery, registering people, giving them the right to vote. He led the march in Chicago for fair housing. In 1968, he led a march in Memphis, Tennessee, even to help the sanitation workers, the garbage men. He led many, many marches. This morning, I want to preach from the subject title, using those two passages of scripture in Joshua. I want to preach from the title, Keep On Marching. Keep on marching. Subtitle, be strong and of good courage, but keep on marching. Won't you bow in a moment of prayer? Oh, gracious and merciful Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, now for this opportunity to serve you. I'm humbled by this awesome responsibility. And now, Lord, I pray that you use me as a vessel, if you will, merchandise your word through me and to me and to these your people. Let your word go forth with boldness and clarity where your name is magnified and glorified. Your people are edified and your kingdom is advanced. This is my prayer. I'm your servant and you're my God. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Keep on marching. Dr. King in the speech once said, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Keep on marching. Keep moving. Keep on marching, be strong and of good courage. The book of Joshua opens with Israel in need of a leader. That's where we are today. The book of Joshua opens with Moses' death. Moses is dead. Moses who carried out his mission. 
Moses who carried out his calling, Moses who brought the people out of Egypt, Moses who had the courage and the holy boldness to stand before the most powerful man on earth at that time, Moses stood there before Pharaoh. He stood there with his feet shoulder width apart. He stood there with his chest out, his shoulders back, and with a loud voice, Moses said unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Moses, Moses carried out his work. Moses who parted the Red Sea and the children of Israel walked across on dry land. Moses who closed the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea. Moses carried out his mission. Moses who led these rebellious hard-headed, stiff-necked, murmuring, complaining people to the doorstep, to the threshold of the promised land has now made his transition to glory. Moses, my servant, is dead. Israel is in need of a leader. And in chapter 1 of the book of Joshua, God says, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Moses is a, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all the people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them. The Israelites, I will give you every place where you set your foot. Keep on marching. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. God says to Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then in verse 6, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. God says, be strong and of good courage. Joshua has been given the assignment of leading these people into the promised land. Joshua has been given the task of leading God's people into enemy territory. When you read verse 6, it suggests that Joshua was afraid. When you read verse 6, it sounds like Joshua was scared. Verse 6 makes it sound as though Joshua was in fear of those who dwelled in the land. Sounds like Joshua was afraid of the giants in the land, but Joshua was not afraid. God called Joshua for a reason. Joshua was not scared. In Numbers chapter 13, when Moses sent one man out from each tribe to spy out the land, when Moses sent 12 spies into the land, 10 of them came back with a bad report. 10 of them came back saying the people in the land are too powerful for us. Ten of them said the cities are too fortified, the walls are too high. Ten of them came back and said there are giants in the land. Ten of them said we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. But two of those twelve spies, Joshua and Ben Caleb, said we're well able to go up and possess the land. Joshua was not afraid. But God says be strong and of good courage. Joshua, God reminds Joshua to be strong, but Joshua was already strong. Joshua was already courageous. In Joshua chapter 3, he fights and drives out all the people of the land. In Joshua chapter 3, Joshua was already strong and courageous because the Bible tells us that he drove out the Canaanites and the Hittites. He drove out the Hivites and the Pavisites and the Girgashites. He drove out the Amorites. He drove out the Jebusites. Joshua was already a strong warrior. Joshua was already a courageous soldier. And so why does God have to remind Joshua to be strong and courageous? When you read this chapter 1 of the book of Joshua, why does God have to remind Joshua four times? In chapter 1, God has to say four times, be strong and courageous. In verse 6, God says, be strong and courageous. In verse 7, God tells Joshua to be strong and very courageous. 
In verse 9, God reminds Joshua to be strong and of good courage. And then in verse 18, God tells the people to tell Joshua to be strong and courageous. Four times. Why does God have to continually, again and again, over and over, tell Joshua to be strong? You know how we are, the human spirit. We don't like to be told things over and over again. We don't like it when our parents try to tell us something. We say, I got it, Daddy, I heard you the first time. Why does God have to remind him over and over and over again? We know that human nature will say, you don't have to tell me again. You don't have to tell me again over and over. I heard you. Why does God do this to Joshua? God knows that Joshua is strong. He knows that he's a mighty warrior. He knows Joshua's character. Why does God have to do this? Because Joshua is a soldier. Joshua is a commander. He is a general. And God knows that it's going to be difficult for a soldier. It's going to be hard for someone who leads the military. It's going to be hard for, for someone who's been in charge of, of troops and soldiers to lead murmuring civilians. You see, Moses put up with all of that complaining. Moses bit his ear to all the murmuring and complaining and criticism. At every turn, the people had something negative to say to Moses. But God says to Joshua, be strong. Be strong, not just in battle against the enemy. You're going to have to be strong with the people you're leading. God knows a warrior. God knows a soldier. A general is not going to put up with murmuring. God knows that Joshua is a warrior. He's a commander of the military. And a commander in the military is not going to tolerate any belly aching and complaining. These Israelites, these so-called stubborn, stiff-necked people, Joshua is not going to tolerate that. And God knows that. And God has to tell Joshua, love the people. Love the people. Love the people. Be strong. It's, you have to be strong to love people you don't like. You have to be strong to love people who get on your nerves. You have to be strong to love people who are constantly critical and criticizing you. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong. You see, in the military, when you receive a command, when you're in the military, when you receive orders, uh, that's it. There's nothing to say about it. When you receive orders in the military, there's no questioning it. There's no talking back. There's no, let me give you my opinion. Let me tell you how I feel about it. No, there's no whining. No belly aching in the military when you're told to do something. There's no pushback. There's no retort. There's no debate. There's no back and forth discussion. When a commander gives you an order in the military, you stand tall at attention and you salute your superior officer. And then you go out and execute that order to the best of your ability. That's in the military. And God knows that Joshua is a soldier. God knows people already have a hard time following orders. We see it today. There are people who are just out of order. They're just in disorder. There are people who have a hard time following the rules. There are people who have a hard time following instruction. And Joshua has to lead people like that. He has to lead people to a place where they've never been before. Joshua, you'll discover when you read the entire 24 books, 24 chapters of Joshua, you will discover that oftentimes Joshua gave commands. Joshua gave orders. He spoke like a commander. He spoke like a general. When you read the book of Joshua, nowhere in the book of Joshua do you read that Joshua said, I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, he never begged. You never see Joshua say, I invite thee to join me. No, no, Joshua gave commands. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 10, the Bible says, Joshua ordered the soldiers, the officers of the people. In chapter 2, the Bible says, Joshua commanded the spies to go look over the land. In Joshua chapter 4, the Bible says Joshua commanded that each man take up a stone of remembrance. In Joshua chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says Joshua commanded the priest 
to come down to the river and take their place with the Ark of the Covenant. Joshua gave orders. He gave commands. Joshua even commanded his own house. There's some folks not even in charge of their own house. Joshua, I know I'm right about it because in the 24th chapter of Joshua's book, verse 15, he says, choose ye this day who you will serve, whether it be the gods on the other side of the river in Egypt or the gods in whose land you dwell today. But here's the command for his own household. He said, but as for me and my house, Joshua commanded his own house. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua sounds like my daddy. If you live in this house, you're under my orders. If you live in this house and drink the water I provide, if you eat the food I put on that table, if you're going to enjoy that heat that I'm paying for with Nipsco, if you're going to enjoy the lights, you're going to serve the Lord. You're going to follow my orders. If you're going to live under this roof, that's taking command of your own house. Joshua was in charge. He was a warrior. And God has to say to this warrior, be strong and of good courage. A lot of folks don't like instructions. A lot of folks don't like rules. They don't like to follow orders. One of the most difficult times I had was when I transitioned out of the military. When I came home and I started teaching school, I, was, I taught seventh grade my first year. And, you know, that, that age group, that first right into becoming a teenager, oh, man. You know, <laughs> you know, and here it is, I was a platoon sergeant. I could tell somebody to go do something, and they would come back and tell me to come inspect. We've done it and salute and everything, no talk back. But seventh graders, I would tell them, so I have to tell them over and over again, I had a hard time that first year. Because you're not used to being talked back to. You're not used to being, you know, sassed and smarted off and all of those things. And I had to be strong. You have to control yourself. And this is what God is telling Joshua. He says, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. God says, Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you or for, nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to give to their ancestors. Joshua prays and asks God for the plan. I know you put me in charge, God, but I need to know your plan. And if you want to know God's plan for your life, you need to pray. Ask God to reveal to you what it is he wants you to do. Joshua prays and asks God for a plan. Joshua knows that orders have to be followed. A soldier, when orders are not obeyed, he knows that the punishment can be severe. There will be confusion if orders aren't followed. Severe even unto death, the punishment. In the Old Testament law, in the military, those who were disobedient, they were pulled out of the ranks and executed. In the book of, in the Levitical law, in the book of Leviticus, if you did not follow orders while you were in the military, you were put to death. Not only that, Joshua had some warriors under his command that would make sure his orders were followed. He had some soldiers that were so loyal to him that they would take care of anyone who does not obey. Anyone who does not carry out their orders is right here in the text. In Joshua 6, verse 12, down in verse 12, where it says, But the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, The Lord will give you the rest by giving you this land. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had already received their portion of the promised land. See, these were the armed guards that protected the children of Israel. These were the ones who went ahead of them. And so Moses already gave them their portion because going into the promised land, they would be the first to go in. And so they already had their promise. They already had their portion. And so now they are loyal even unto death. The half-tribe of Manassas, those were soldiers. Half-tribe of Manassas, they were half women, half of them were men. And all of the men were loyal to Joshua. 
Moses had given them their part of the land east of the Jordan. They were happy with what Moses gave them, what Moses had done for them. And so they vowed to Joshua. It's right down here in verse 16. In Joshua 6, verse 16, they, they answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. These were some obedient soldiers. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will fully obey you. And may the Lord God be with you as he was with Moses. And here it is in verse 18. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you tell them, whatever you may command of them, if they don't do it, we will put them to death. And then he said, they say to Joshua, you be strong and courageous, but we'll take care of this. Joshua has some soldiers who were loyal to him. And so Joshua was a warrior. Joshua was a soldier. He was a general given the commission to lead these people into the promised land. He prays. He asks God to help him. He prays and asks God for the plan that he has for him in leading these people. And in chapter 6, God gives Joshua that plan. Then the Lord says, see, I've delivered Jericho into your hands, along with his king and his fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them, when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. Don't you know God will give you a plan that fits you? Don't you know that God will give you a plan that's tailor-made just for you? This is an operation for a soldier and God gave that to Joshua. When you look at verse 3, it says, March around the city for six days. March around the city with no noise. March around the city and put the priest in front and have them carry the trumpets for six days. Don't blow the trumpets. March without talking. March without complaining. March without murmuring. March even without gossiping. God is turning these Israelites into soldiers. March and keep. This is hard to even deliver and might be even harder to receive. March around and keep your mouth shut. That's what it's saying right here in verse 10. Joshua commanded the army, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout and then shout. In other words, I don't want to hear it. Just keep on marching. Just keep on moving. March around the walls of Jericho. You see, the walls of Jericho were fortified. The walls of Jericho had three tiers, three levels that reached 30 feet high. The walls of Jericho were so wide that two chariots could ride on top of the walls side by side. The walls of Jericho covered a perimeter of 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers translates into six miles. So God wants his people to march, get up every day for six days and march six miles a day. Here's the key. March six miles every day and don't say anything. March six miles every day without talking. Now, that may be all right for soldiers, but these were Israelites. And the Israelites represent the church. These were church folk. And you know, it's hard for church folk to do anything without talking. It's hard for church folks to do anything without complaining. Church folks always have something to say. But God had already given them the order not to say anything. You know they wanted to say something. You know, somebody after the first day said, Joshua, you must have lost your mind. After the second day of six miles, somebody said, Joshua, this is ridiculous. After the third day, somebody said, my feet hurt. My head hurt. My back hurt. But they were under military command. And they couldn't say a mumbling word. God gave Joshua the plan that fit his vocation. God brought all of them under his command. They were under his leadership. But God put them under his command. 
See, there's a difference in being under somebody's leadership and under somebody's command. Under leadership, you can listen or not listen. Under leadership, you can take it or leave it. But when you're under somebody's command, you have to follow orders. And God put them in a position where they had to follow orders. I'm going to close when I tell you this. God said to them, march around the walls every day for six days. March six miles a day for six days. That's 36 miles. Stay with me. On the seventh day, march seven times around the walls. On the seventh time around, Joshua give the command for them to shout. To shout and the walls will come tumbling down. You see, the walls represent all the obstacles in your life. The walls represent everything that you're going through. The walls represent this pandemic. The walls represent racism and injustice. But these walls are going to come tumbling down if you just keep right on marching. Those walls will tumble down. I'm going to give you some heavenly arithmetic. I'm going to give you some majestic mathematics right now. God says march every day for six days. One time around uh, is six miles. Do that every day for six days. Six times six in my math book is 36. But then on the seventh day, march around seven times. You missed it. Seven is a number of perfection. On the seventh day, march around seven times. You still missed it. March around seven times because seven times six is 42. There I see Jesus. You should have shouted right there because 42 is the number of generations. Jesus came down through 42 generations, got dropped off in Bethlehem of Judea one cold December night. Seven times six is 42. Jesus came down through 42 generations to tear down the walls that keep us from God. He came down to tear down the walls, the walls of sin, the walls of selfishness, the walls of hate, and the walls of envy. Jesus came down through 42 generations to tear down the walls of jealousy, tear down the walls of meanness, to tear down the walls of sin. They marched around the walls. They marched for 42 miles. Whatever you're going through, keep on marching. A loved one may be sick, just keep on marching. Had to send one of your friends home to glory. Keep right on marching. Job is running out. This pandemic is running wild. Pain and panic are chasing each other. Mad dog running the streets. Keep on marching. Children may be acting out. Keep on marching. Children can't go to school like they used to. Keep on marching. You may get talked about. People may put you down. They run your name through the mud. Just be strong and of good courage. Because after a while, soon and very soon, by and by, it's going to be all right. You'll be able to shout. Just like the children of Israel, you'll be able to shout, Jesus is my Savior. You'll be able to shout, Jesus is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than any brother. Jesus can make a way out of no way. Jesus, you'll be able to shout, Jesus slammed in your face. Jesus. Oh, you ought to shout Jesus. Jesus woke me up this morning. Jesus watched over me last night. Jesus. That's worth shouting about. Jesus kept the blood running warm in my veins. Gave me the activity of the limbs. Gave me my sight. Gave me my hearing. I can taste my food. This Jesus, that's worth shouting about. Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for another day's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for food on my 
table a clothes on my back a roof over my head thank you Jesus for shoes to walk in a car to ride in a house to live in a bed to sleep in thank you Jesus for dying on an old rugged cross for my sins buried in an old dusty grave Thank you for raising your hand. All power is in my hand. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is worth shouting about. Keep on marching. Be strong and of good courage. Keep right on marching. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, what a mighty God we see. Oh, the Lord has not just brought us a mighty long way. God has brought us all the way. What a mighty God we see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. On the strength and power of God's word, on the strength of the preach word, I offer the invitation to discipleship. Now is the time and this is the place to give your life to Christ. If you don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sins, now is the time to give your life to Jesus. Won't you come? The invitation to discipleship is yours as we stand to our feet. Won't you come? The doors to my father's house are open. Man, woman, boy, or girl, Unsaved, unchurched, or uncommitted. Won't you come? To the Friends of Christ Baptist Church, those who are watching by way of social media, I offer that same invitation to you. Won't you come? The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father in heaven, you shall be saved. Make that confession today. Once you make that confession, I pray that the Lord put a covering on you. I pray that God order your steps from this day forward. Make that confession. And once you make that confession unto the Lord, make sure that you get into a good Bible teaching, Bible reading church. We would love to have you here at Christ Baptist Church. But if you can't make it here to 4700 East 7th Avenue, Gary, Indiana, Make sure you get under the tutelage of a good Bible teaching, Bible reading church. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your hearts. Yes, yes. It's true. Yes. director and our musicians. Chris Sims, now is time for musical meditation as we allow the word of God and the preach word to fill the sanctuary and penetrate hearts. It's meditation time as our music director plays for us music of meditation where we thank God for all that he's done for us, all the blessings that he's bestowed upon us since we were together last. It's meditation time.
is his prayer time. It's time to render our requests to God, make our requests known to God, so that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's prayer time. We want to make sure that we pray for this nation, pray for what's coming up this week, the inauguration on Wednesday, and the days to follow. Pray for this new administration. Pray that God just put his hands on us and covers us. We have witnessed down through the years this evil element. Even when we were in slavery, in the chains of slavery, when we were not allowed to vote, even when those chains were broken and we were given rights, we were denied the right to vote. And if you voted, you could have lost your life, could have been hung. And down through the years, there were other rules put in place, Jim Crow laws that kept us out of the voting box, out of the voting booth. And now it's not us who's under attack. They're attacking those who are counting our votes. They're attacking those who are certifying our votes. We need to pray for this nation. There's a sickness in the land. Deacon George Hollingsworth is coming now to render the altar prayer. We want to pray for our seasoned saints who have witnessed so much in their lives. We want to pray for our young people, our children, who are about to enter this world. Pray for them as they are going to school at home and at school. Pray for our teachers. Pray for every church that's open or even had to close in the name of Jesus. It's prayer time. Let us bow. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we just come to you with bowed heads and a humble heart. We come to you because you're the one and only true living God. We come to you because you loved us so much that you gave your best for us. And your best was your only begotten son, Jesus, who paid the ultimate price and died for our sins. You didn't let him stay dead, but after three days you Raise him with all power in heaven and earth. And now he's sitting at the right hand side of you, the Father, interceding for us. Father, thank you for the message and the messenger that we have received today. It opened our eyes and it opened up our hearts that we know we still have a long ways to go. But it's not by our might, but it's by your will and your might. And we are walking by faith, but we realize that it's not our strength that we can get the things we want, but it's our trust in you A one living testimony of my trust in you is that from the day I was born and up to now, you have watched over me. You have blessed me, but not only me, but so many others. And we look over our lives and we ask the question, how did we get over? Father, we going into the inauguration week and you know what is taking place and it's beyond our comprehension that men have stooped so low till we're at this point in our lives. But we also know that you said in the last days things like this will take place and sure enough it's taking place. And Father, because we are putting our trust in you, we know everything is going to be all right. We're going to keep the faith. And we're going to keep on marching. 
Father, we lift up those that are in high schools. They're going to school some days and some days they're staying home. Teachers who aren't going to work aren't getting paid and we pray that they come to a happy medium because they don't want to suffer and cause the pandemic to hit their families. They have concerns. And Father, we pray for this nation. For you know that so many have voted for a lie. They believed in a lie. But there are more of us that believe in you. And that's the good thing. And now, Father, I can stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If I will withdraw thyself from thee, oh, well, shall I go? I'm going to walk on faith. This congregation is walking by faith. We're putting our trust in you. We're knowing that everything is going to be all right. And Father, we give you the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. Because only you are worthy to be praised, worthy of the glory. This is our prayer. And this is our request. In the sweet, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus of Christ. Amen. And amen.
pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Were you blessed by the service today? Amen. Amen. Let's make sure that we uh, go to our Facebook page and you'll see that we're still under a church-wide fast. You'll see the information on the fasting on our Facebook page. Make sure that you tune in, those who are watching, tune in next Sunday and join with us at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time here at 4700 East 7th Avenue, Gary, Indiana. I thank God for you watching with us today, worshiping with us today. I thank God for you all coming out today. Let us stand to our feet for our closing prayer and benediction. Father, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen all that our ears have heard and all that our hearts have felt. We thank you, Lord, for the music ministry. We thank you for the media ministry. We thank you for all who came out today. Father, we thank you for your word today. And we especially thank you for Jesus. And now as we prepare to go out from this place, but not out of your presence, we pray, oh God, that you go ahead of us, you go before us, that you make a way for us. But most importantly, God, go with us. Now may the grace of God as Father and as Son and the sweet communion of God as Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each of these thy people now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. And all of God's people can say together, Amen. <laughs>